Good afternoon. It's time for an update. Today is March 26th and it is about six o'clock in the evening. Just got done working. Working from home most of the time like a lot of the people in the world right now that can. Um, just wanted to give a quick update. Uh, my daughter's napping and my son is at his friend's house so I have a little peace and quiet of non-interruption so here is our broilers um, I believe they are going on a week old now uh, maybe a week and two days and they are eating and drinking like crazy uh, fixing to fill their feeder up again um, haven't they've actually tore their feeder apart earlier today trying to get more food um, but I think that we're going to start giving them two containers of food today and if you know anything about broilers these are the Cornish X they'll eat as much food as you give them but you do not have to feed them 24 7 just because they will eat it doesn't mean that they need it um, uh, it'll basically it'll be waste so it'll just they'll, they will eat it and they will consume it but not much of a difference between um, their growth if you only feed them during the day or you feed them a certain amount um, per day they will keep eating just like a pig and pig themselves out but everything that they don't need to grow they'll just poop out and it'll just create more waste and you'll just be wasting your food um, so when I put the broilers outside um, I generally with 25 broilers I'll do about 11 pounds of food a day and I will keep that going from about two weeks two or three weeks on and um, I might up it to maybe 12 if, if there's a full 25 in there instead of 20 um, but that's all they'll get so I'll give them that in the morning um, and then when that's gone they don't get any more until the next day and what that does is I move them around my tractor encourages them to eat a lot of grass scratch around for bugs and do normal things that chickens do um, to forage for their food if they want to eat and they still grow to be um, you know seven pounds by eight weeks um, and I don't have a lot of waste and a lot of extra um, you know mess to clean up after them so just a little tidbit people think that you're supposed to feed broilers as much as they'll eat but the fact of the matter is you don't and um, they will continue to eat but they'll just poop it all out so you'll just have more mess on your hands and you're wasting your food so let's go look at the greenhouse And like I said, it is after 6 o'clock, so it's time for a beverage. Alright, so first things first, I just want to show you what I got sprouting in the greenhouse right now. It has been so nice for the last two weeks. It has been pretty much 80 plus degrees and sunny every single day. So I'm having to keep my hatch. It was open. I got to fix my hatch apparently, but I had it full on open, but the wind knocked it down, I guess. Um, so I have some, I just started some cantaloupe and I've got some of those um, Ukrainian zucchini that I've started. And um, today I started some Wolverine tomatoes so basically these are like a golden yellow tomato with purplish uh, burgundy shoulders um, never heard of them seen them before saw them on uh, ebay someone was a uh, you know hobby seed saver and grew these last year and saved seed saved the seeds and i wanted to grow them they look so awesome could never have too many tomatoes um, got some more market more cukes that I'm trying to sprout 
and my tomatillo verdes, which are the green uh, tomatillos. My seeds came in, got them planted, and I uh, planted them yesterday. And these are the green um, tomatillos or husk cherries um, or husk tomatoes that that the uh, is popular in Mexican cuisine. They make salsa verde out of them and all their um, tomato -y sauces and things. Love them, love them, so good. Um, and down here, my marconis and my jalapenos never came up, so I think those seeds just might be no good. But the yellow, the la super large yellow bell peppers that I saved from my store bell peppers have started coming up. The Mad Hatter um, sweet peppers that I saved from seeds. Um, I bought these plants from Lowe's last year and they were so prolific and um, we love them so much. I saved some seeds and planted some more seeds um, just the other day for my saved seeds and there they are, they're sprouting. And then here's the other new tomato that I found, um, same seller as the Wolverine. Um, these are called Xanadu green tomatoes and basically like they are a a tomato that ripens green and they are green shouldered uh, or they're green striped tomatoes. Um, I think they may have red or orange or burgundy um, shoulders to them. So really cool looking tomatoes and these are beefsteaks um, as well as the Wolverine. So super excited to see how that comes out and got some petunias um, planting as many flowers as I can for the bees and those came up really well um, planted some more sumter cucumbers uh, those are basically an all-purpose cucumber you can pickle them or eat them as a slicer and these are um, these are these bear paw tomatoes came free when I ordered some Paul Roberson um, seeds last spring and uh, they were highly recommended uh, they had good reviews and they're a medium sized red tomato so I wanted to try them out this year it was too late in the season when I got them last year um, to really experience them so seeing if they will come up what we got going on with those um, Blue Lake pole beans I'm trying to sprout here and in the bottom one I have I'm sprouting speckled butter peas and then over there is some more of the burpee stringless green beans bush beans and then right here are some Mississippi peas uh, basically like a purple hole type pea and then I am trying to germinate some Roma 2 bush beans right here which are sort of like a flat Italian bean green bean which are my favorite beans to eat um, and I've grown those last year but you got to be careful with those because they're not stringless and if you don't pick them when they're small they will have a pretty coarse string through them so you have to be on top of them but if you do you have really good beans um, got some uh, dahlias some sugar baby watermelons some Jack B Littles and some Ukrainian black um, pumpkins and then um, a couple days ago I planted some butternut squash and I'm planting extra of everything because I'm encouraging everyone to grow gardens anyone that I can ever and I have a couple of friends that have started gardens and I'm trying to help them by starting um, transplants for them to go in their garden so uh, back here I got my tomatillos those are the purple ones and some uh, long skinny eggplant, sweet alyssum flowers, some more of the bubba bush okra. And I've already got a bunch of this on my hardening off table and I've shared some. And then some Haley's Best Cantaloupe. This is the dwarf blue curly kale. And then back here my honeydew melons are coming up. And some more of the uh, purple tomatillos some Santa Fe Grandes. So those are um, some that I picked up as transplants last year um, and I grew them and 
Actually, I think I grew them the year before, and I kept them going for a year. But they were so prolific, and they were so good. Um, they kind of remind me of a mix between a jalapeno and a banana pepper. Um, but they're really good yellow peppers. Kind of in the mild um, genre. So, got some Jimmy Nardellos. I tried to grow some of these last year, but it was pretty late once I got the seeds and um i just didn't it just got to that point where it gets too hot um for any, anything to stay keep from being dried out um or too wet from the rain so i haven't got any of those um you know up and going yet and i've been excited about trying those for the last couple of years so hopefully i will get some sprouting here pretty soon also uh cobra beans these were um given to me traded last year from one of my friends from baker creek um seeds and i don't really know anything about them i just planted them um she sent them to me and i want to see i don't know if they're like a black bean or what i'll have to do some more research but i had a few seeds so i went ahead and planted them more butternut squash black prince tomatoes this is the other pack of tomato seeds that came free with my Paul Robeson seeds and these are like a medium um, round black tomato and um, they have good reviews on their taste and their uh, tenacity as far as avoiding diseases and being prolific um, so hopefully I'll get to try those out for the first time this year and then back here I got some yellow crookneck squash and um, I did plant those from seed, but I had a extra tag um, left over from transplants from last year. I just shoved it in there, but these are the early summer crooknecks. Uh, Lemon Queen sunflowers have yet to come up. Um, yet to come up also are Cubanelles, Serrano peppers, and Sugar Rush peppers that I planted um, back in January, as you can see the date. But they may come out, but in the next couple weeks I know it's going to be hot enough and if they don't I'm going to throw them out and start over. And then here are my coleus that I started from the pelleted seed. Um, I'm going to be starting some more of that now that it's warmer. And then over here I got some clumps and spineless okra and some more market more cucumbers and some more chocolate striped tomatoes. I've had a few sprout and I've already transplanted them but I kept this in here because I wanted to see if more would sprout. Um, and then right here I have some nasturtiums, just a mixed variety of nasturtium colors um, that I'm growing. And up here I got some Blue Lake and Kentucky Wonder pole beans that I'm sprouting. And some speckled butter peas that haven't started coming up yet. And my Max Pack cucumbers have not come up either, so I'm going to be starting some more of those just in case um, those got too wet or didn't come together for me. So let's go over to the hardening off table and we'll look at some baby animals. So here's my mama with the baby chicks. I had to move her into this pen right here because it is uh, really secure. A snake can't get in here. and. There is a, there's been a rat snake that has been coming into the little house where they were at nighttime and uh, going after mice, I'm sure, that are in the feeder at night. But he is not big enough to eat these biddies, but he has tried to eat three of them. Um, basically, he has tried to swallow them whole from the head down and can't eat them because they're too big, so he ends up spitting them out and... Um, but they, they died anyway. So after losing three of them, I decided that they needed to go in here and the daddy chicken is in there too. Um, because he's been, I've been letting them out of their, the bantams out of their pen to free range around in the large chicken yard. And he's just too old to be messing with my big rooster. I don't want him to get hurt. So he's in here with her safe and sound to these I'm going to keep them, I'm going to keep mom and daddy in here with these biddies uh, for a few days. These biddies are big enough to now to be, 
they don't need her anymore. Um, so I'm just going to keep them in here for a couple days for them to get used to this pen. And then I'll be moving mom and daddy back to the Bantam pen. And then over here, my uh, our Muscovy ducklings that we bought. Um, probably 10, 12 days ago. Uh, tomorrow might be two weeks that we've had those. Actually, we picked them up on a Friday. But they're getting really big. And I've moved them to this bigger pen so that they can have a big... Um, big pool of water to play around in and last them for more than a few hours. So here is my messy hardening off table. You can see how big my transplants have gotten. Um, I picked up some Rutgers. I have some Rutgers seeds, but um, my local feed store had a four pack which had five plants in it um, for under $2. So I went ahead and got some transplants so that I wouldn't have to worry about with all the other varieties of seeds that I was planting. I just wanted a couple of the Rutgers. Um, the Rutgers are a determinate tomato, so they do, um, they're like the Phoenix, or yeah, the Phoenix that I've been growing. They produce all of their fruit and then they die and they don't grow to be a giant 10 foot tall vine or whatever like the rest of the tomatoes I'm growing. Um, but they're really uh, prolific and they put off nice fruit. So. I've been growing those for years and years, so I wanted a couple of um, determinate tomatoes to go in the mix. And then uh, all this, these two rows here are the Napa Chardonnays. And then I got some Paul Roberson and San Marzano. And then here I have uh, some chocolate stripes and climbing triple crops that I'm going to be transplanting out. So I'm making room for some Rutgers, some triple crops, and some Abe Lincolns in my garden and I have a couple more Dr. or at least one more Dr. Witchy and I'm always going to make room for Dr. Witchy because that's my favorite. And I've been busy trying to transplant out my these peppers because these peppers are getting pretty big. Um, I planted out some um, purple jalapenos and some purple bell peppers. So I just have these California Wonders and then pepperoncinis that I need to plant out and also planted out some orange de Toros. Um, but here is my Juliettes and uh, my, the rest of my Tomatillos and then all of my okra. I got the Bubba Dwarf Bush Okra, Clemson Spineless and Red Burgundy. Getting ready to go out into the garden. So let's see. This is a empty container um, that my neighbor was throwing out just a plastic barrel and I have started composting in it. Um, I've been cleaning out my brooder box where my broilers are and throwing that in here. That's pine shavings with the manure and then mixing that with or layering it with leaves and um, green um, weeds to make some compost. And my irises and my other lilies, my um, amaryllis and all that are starting to come up. So the first thing, I'm making some progress right here. I'm going to make this into two little beds here. The middle tire right there is going to be coming out, but these two tires on each side of that one is going to be staying. And just to have a little bump out for a tomato plant or whatever I want to grow, beans, peas, what have you. But that's basically right there going to be, um, looks like about a 30 inch wide bed with some keyhole bump out. So there's the first bump out, there's the second bump out is that tire, and then the last tire is going to be another bump out. And then I'm going to make it into um, two sections. So working on it final bed modification that I'm doing for right now and we'll go this way for a change so here I got my Nantes carrots coming along and I just started two days ago picking um, golden wax beans off of my golden wax and um, royalty purple bush beans and you can see some royalty purple bush beans hanging right there just waiting for them to get a little bit bigger so finally yes we are getting 
green beans again and bush beans and if you look real close i planted some rainbow carrots and some tender sweet carrots in this little bump out and they're all starting to come up you can see all the little tiny carrots and then i'm trying to germinate some sweet corn or some silver queen corn right here and then these are my lady slipper radishes and beets and beets and my romanesco broccoli is jumping right up and i have a bunch of bean or peas on my little marble shelling peas so some of them are starting to swell up so happy that they're happy you can see all the flowers on them and i have them some flowers in the back and then i have some chives and some um, flowers that I planted, some of those flower rockets. And then I'm trying these out. You saw them in the bed that I'm building right now as, as a bed separator. They're just the things that you pound them in the ground and connect them together and they make a border. So trying that out. And then here is my sunflower bed and these are mammoth sunflowers and solar eclipse and then i got some snapdragons and alyssum that i planted on the front made this border with um, recycled kombucha and uh, craft beer and ginger ale bottles from trader joe's and there's pooh bear and here are my tomato plants they are starting to get flowers on them. And here is my broccoli. I'm still working on it. We come in here and we pick, pick, pick. And then a couple days later, it's filled with broccoli sprouts again. And my eggplant still doing good. That's my amethyst beauty. And some onions. And then right here, I just planted yesterday, which you can tell because it's got dirt on it from getting knocked down because it wasn't established. But um, green zucchini right there and then if we walk this way to my border garden on the fence and this is the fence that's my chicken yard and a part of the area where they get the free range in and this is my cantaloupe these are Charente's cantaloupe and here is another nine or so tomato plants and these are beef steaks kellogg's breakfast uh, roma blueberry clackamas um, dr witchy and Bl um, black beauty and paul robeson and you can see that on this, this paul robeson has really been happy from the get-go He's got blooms all over him. He was the first one to get blooms. And then this Paul, here's, or this Black Beauty, I'm sorry. The Paul Robeson is also. He's not quite as tall as the Black Beauty, but he has got some flowers. Kellogg's Breakfast has got some flowers. So they are just moving right along. I just love coming out here every day and seeing how much taller my tomato plants are. So here is one of my pot potatoes or bag grow bag to potatoes you can see how happy it is it's huge and then in here i planted some more uh, green zucchini and the sun's going down in the west right there so it's really bright and then here's some acorn squash that i planted out um, that i started from seed in january the end of january and you haven't been able to see this before because it's been covered up but i had to uncover it because it had flowers all over it so here is my peter pan dwarf patty pan squash that i put in see how much bigger okay there's the acorn squash there's the other acorn squash that i planted the exact same time that i started the exact same time the only difference is i put that under row cover the middle one right here that's acorn squash that's the same acorn squash i planted it right there the same day that i planted this in here but i covered up i covered this up a few days after that and left it covered um, for a few weeks and that's what happened 
And there is the patty pan.